With Zephyrin Cochran's first warp flight in 2063, suddenly Earth realized that nearby star systems like Alpha Centauri were within humanity's reach, and quickly set their sights on Sol's nearest neighbor. But what wasn't known at the time was that Earth and Alpha Centauri's history had begun long before Starfleet's decision to create a starship to explore that star system. And today, we'll find out how. Hello and welcome to another episode of Truth or Myth Beta Canon, a Star Trek web series that dives into the history of any given topic using Beta Canon sources and my own imagination to fill in the gaps. In today's episode, we're taking a look at humanity's trek to the Alpha Centauri system to better understand its place in Star Trek history. Please note, very little canon information exists about this monumental event in Earth's history. And so what I've done is piece together everything I can into an exciting story that I hope you will all enjoy. But because this is a beta canon video, all information relayed should pretty much be taken with a grain of stardust, and only considered a little bit of Star Trek fun. And so, with all that out of the way, let's begin. Earth's fascination with its closest neighboring star system began long before it was even named by Johann Bayer in 1603. Constant telescopic observations and theories would emerge over the centuries as to what possible discoveries this star system had to offer humanity. But even though close in relative terms, only 4.24 light years away, it would be over 430 years before humanity's questions about the star system would be answered. Alpha Centauri is a trinary star system, with Centauri A officially named Rigel Cantaris, Centauri B officially named Ptolemon, and Centauri C officially named Proxima Centauri. Starfleet records show the official first contact date between humanity and the inhabitants of this trinary star system occurred on June 7, 2068. However, recently declassified documents from both Earth and Alpha Centauri plant an entirely new picture surrounding this historic event. In 2024, outcry over the death and circumstances leading to the Bell Riots had forced the United States of America to focus on its own social issues, while Earth's various space agencies would continue to map the stars, while simultaneously looking for signs of life out in the great vacuum of galactic space. The United Earth Space Probe Agency, also known as USPA, had become Earth's leading agency in the race to interstellar space. However, due to the political nature of humanity at the time, most of USPA's early missions would be highly classified, with Earth's general population never knowing about the actual achievements this organization had accomplished. One such highly classified project was the Starliner class. The United Space Probe Agency wanted the Starliner class to be the first interstellar space vessel to wow humanity. By making it to another star system, and bringing back with it definitive proof of other Earth-type worlds. It was then, in 2039, that USPA would make a discovery that would shock Earth's government to its core. When, during a test on its new long-range sensor modules, USPA's satellite S-144 would discover radio transmissions coming from a planet orbiting Proxima Centauri a small and faint red dwarf sun of the triple star system. After confirming these radio signals were not naturally occurring, the leadership of the time decided to keep this proof of extraterrestrial life from Earth's population, instead commissioning a highly secretive mission to get an Earth vessel to the star system as soon as possible and determine the threat level this alien species posed. Though testing of Earth's first ring-drive warp system had barely begun, in late 2043, 40 brave men and women would take up the task of reaching Proxima Centauri, a journey that Earth's leadership would not know was successful 
unless the Starship returned in 2054. The journey of the XCV Enterprise was actually quite uneventful. The ring warp drive system, when finally fully engaged outside the solar system, had functioned exactly as expected, and in 2048, the Enterprise would indeed reach the Proxima Centauri star system. What they found there was a three-planet star system. Its outer planet was a rocky ice planetoid, similar, though larger than Sol's own dwarf planet Pluto. The middle planet was a super-Earth one, though due to its orbit of approximately 1.5 AUs from its star, was far too distant to support life. The inner planet, however, was virtually smack dab in the star system's habitable zone, and contained an atmosphere almost identical to that of Earth's. Sitting on the outer edge of the star system, Enterprise would conduct various scans and studies of what was then called Proxima Centauri B, until it was finally determined that the radio signal did in fact originate from that planet, and that the planet itself had no form of interstellar travel or satellite detection system. Heading into orbit of the planet, the Enterprise then launched its own satellite probes to monitor the surface of the planet closely, and discovered a species that appeared almost identical to humanity, though with slight variations, and a society close to humanity's own development circa 1940. After three months of observation, it was time for the Enterprise to return home to report its discovery. What was not known by Enterprise or humanity of the time was that the Proxima Centauri civilization was actually far more advanced than what their analysis had displayed. True, most technological development was circa 1940s, a crashed spacecraft of unknown origin found buried in a remote region of the planet's desert had begun to propel this society into a speedy technological revolution. And the other thing that the Enterprise and humanity didn't know was that their trip to Proxima Centauri's had not gone so unnoticed as they had thought, further driving the already united population of the planet to head into interstellar space. Reverse engineering several of the technologies used in the crashed spacecraft the Proxima Centaurians quickly cobbled together an interstellar probe capable of warp flight. For the Enterprise, the trip back to Earth was again an uneventful one. But when they arrived back home, they were shocked to discover World War III had begun, a nuclear holocaust which had cost the lives of approximately 600 million humans. Very few governments also remained, with humanity developing a more chaotic system of village states. USPA headquarters on Earth no longer existed. But luckily for the Enterprise, USPA's moon base, a self-sufficient base on the surface of Luna, was not only intact, but had assumed control of all USPA's assets. And USPA itself would order Enterprise's mission of Earth's first successful warp flight and discovery of alien life forms in another star system to be completely classified and buried in order to not exacerbate an already tense situation on their home world, with the organization time-locking the classified files for two centuries. Of course, the decision to keep humanity from learning the truth about the cosmos would be taken out of USPA's hands with Zephyrin Cochrane's launch of the Phoenix in 2063 as a passing Vulcan starship would detect the warp trail and decide to make first contact with humanity, becoming one of the most influential turning points in human history. Alpha Centauri's probe watched all these events, having arrived in the Sol system shortly before Enterprise had even returned. Analyzing and translating various broadcasts and radio signals from the star system's third planet, the Proxima Centaurians were surprised to discover that they had much in common with humanity. A strange affection would grow within the Proxima Centauri population, having their own newscasts frequently reporting on the Earther situation. After Cochrane's warp flight and first contact, the situation for Earth changed rapidly, and Starfleet, 
not knowing of the previous mission to the Proxima Centauri system, began their own plans to visit their neighbor. Yuspa, rather than opting to tell Starfleet of its previous mission, kept itself silent on the entire issue, not wanting to disrupt the peaceful process that had begun for the planet Earth. And so, on June 7, 2068, the Starfleet vessel Bayer would make its historic first contact with the Proxima Centaurians just inside that neighboring star system, and extending the open hand of friendship, a long and fruitful trade and sharing of cultures would begin, eventually leading the Proxima Centaurians to be one of the founding members of the Federation. So good were relations with the Proxima Centaurians that they would even agree to Starfleet establishing a domed colony on their second planet. And shortly after first contact had been made, the Proxima Centaurian government would even grant several humans citizenship on their home planet, including the famed Zephyrin Cochran himself, all the while keeping their knowledge of the XCV Enterprise mission to the star system and their interstellar probe that had been watching humanity at the time a secret from Earth. Until finally, in 2263, the time-locked files would be released, and the full story of the Earth-Proxima Centauri relationship would be revealed. The United Federation of Planets would then declare November 29th as a human holiday to honor the heroes of that mission, and Proxima Centauri itself would follow suit, declaring the third day of Makaran as the planetary holiday, cementing this monumental event in human history. Thank you for watching today's episode of Truth or Myth Beta Canon. What do you think of the Proxima Centauri system and the historical narrative that I've created here? Would you like to see more videos like this one? Well, leave your comments in the section below, and don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel, hitting that little bell icon so you won't miss a single video we release. Want to help this channel reach Proxima Centauri? Then consider becoming a channel patron. The link to our Patreon account is in the description below. Thanks again for watching, live long, and prosper.